Ready. So, anyways, at Red Hat, we use uh, Rocket Chat. Any guys ever heard of Rocket Chat? A couple of people. So, Rocket Chat basically is a um, web based chat program, very similar to Slack, uh, open source. So, basically, we have our Red Hat ninjas sitting out there, you know, uh, either in front of the customer uh, or within the Red Hat organization. We actually had a need for a chat service that was accessible outside the VPN. We have a uh, IRC server that everyone kind of gets on and chats. But for those of the ninjas that are out in the field, or the consultants as we like to refer to ourselves sometimes, um, are out in the field and can't connect behind the VPN because of customer firewalls and everything else. So we needed a mechanism by which we can communicate using a Red Hat owned service, or at least run Red Hat software. So we basically set up a Rocket Chat instance that's running in Docker um, inside of one of our data centers. Uh, we have HA proxy in front of it. And uh, the question was, you know, kind of how do we start to get some metrics out of the rocket chatting system, make sure we know what things are, are working well. So here's some of the big numbers. Basically, we're currently, as of yesterday, eight and a half million messages were passed on rocket chat. Uh, we tend to go at, uh, it's about one, one and a half to two, about, actually, sorry, it's about two to three months, I believe it is right now, per million messages. Um, so we actually are experiencing some pretty crazy growth. Um, we are also, at times uh, during the week, almost approaching one message a second, which kind of gets interesting. Um, so as you can kind of see, the, the number of users that are on the system has grown pretty rapidly. Uh, and talking to the Rocket Chat guys, we're actually one of the largest Rocket Chat instances uh, currently in use in terms of messages. So as you can see, over, over a six-month period, we've had quite a lot of growth. It's pretty amazing um, what we've seen here um, and so forth. Another one that was also interesting, because we had HA proxy in front of it, we wanted to get some other statistics. Um, we wanted to get uh, you know, back-end connections per second, how long does that take, um, you know, the, the moving average response times. Uh, these actually get kind of interesting because these are moving average data that comes out of uh, HA proxy. Um, by and themselves, they're not very useful um, uh, at the, the small level because it's you know, a couple of um, queries, especially over here. Um, our, our connections can take under, under a millisecond. So it's a zero or one, pretty much. What we have found is that when Zabbix, you look at it over a longer time period, you can start to begin to see a trend you know, towards you know, just about a millisecond. Now we're getting about a millisecond and a half, two milliseconds. We're starting to get into the resolution of what HA proxy will show. But because it comes to us as zero or one, out of HA proxy, you know, Zabbix starts to average that you know, as you start to look in the graph. So, we pulled the data straight from um, Rocket Chat, basically hitting a uh, statistics endpoint. It was a JSON uh, data point. We hit this. We started doing this, like I say, six months ago. So we had to write a script that would pull the JSON data. We get our JSON data like so, uh, and then uh, we got to start processing it. So then we start writing. You know, and it wrote a whole bunch of um, items, dependent items. Uh, as you can see, the main Rocket Chat statistics coming in this way. We did something very similar to HA proxy. I'll talk about in a second. And so then we'll take out something like uh, you know, private, uh, total private group messages. We'll pull that out. We actually store it as a single item because we actually track that number sometimes. And then from there, we'll derive that as numbers per second. So like I say, we've got our basic one. We set it up, you know, uh, standard dependent item stuff. We do our JSON path. Um, JQ, if I remember right, was the utility that I found very useful on the command line. I'd basically just pump my uh, JSON data string straight into JQ, use the JSON query, figure out exactly what I wanted, good to go. Move on to the next one, change per second. Now I've got my two data points, and I can now look at uh, you know, change per second, or I can look at the total value number, because that's kind of an interesting one sometimes. HA proxy, like I said. This one was actually really interesting. And um, one of the things that I discovered in working with this is that uh, uh, the preprocessors, while really useful, and the regex, while really powerful, falls apart when you start to deal with CSV data, uh, especially when you consider from the perspective of something like HA proxy. I have to query on the beginning of the line and then pull something halfway down the line. So I need to basically extract out the whole line as part of my regex. It makes it a little tricky. The other one that's also important to note is the location and columns of information may, challenge, may change at any moment. Yet, I may have an index, you know, the, the first row may tell me what the whole column is about. So, I found that to be quite tricky. So, we ended up basically writing a uh, script that uh, queried the endpoint, converted the CSV data into a JSON point, and then we just ingested JSON data uh, like normal. Newer versions of HA proxy do make it easier. Um, it looked like it was two or three versions after the one we've got that uh, uh, basically then start to, you know, present it as JSON for you. 
Um, move, also, some other things that we, we do with this one too is um, a lot of our you know, groups that communicate uh, internally, the lab that we're, we're actually running our Zabbix server um, is tied into it so that it will alert if something goes down you know, in our lab environment or something is wrong, Zabbix will begin to alert inside of our rocket chat instance as well. So we kind of have it going both ways. Zabbix is pulling from it and Zabbix is pushing to it at the same time. Uh, we haven't worked with Hubot yet to kind of make a, for a two-way communication with the API, but that might be something uh, to try for next year. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew.